The interview we're doing today for the One Million Fathers, a man by the name of Lester Thomas joins us and he speaks to us about his situation with child support, visitation, and family law courts. Now you will hear in this interview how this man was very proactive and he's taken a great step in the right direction of counteracting the family law courts. Also in this interview, you will hear a great idea was sparked and we will act on that idea that you will hear in an interview. Now, if you would like to be interviewed and you have a great story that you'd like to share with us about your child support issue, visitation, make sure you join us on the One Million Fathers Facebook page. Send us a message there and we will try to get the interview set up because this platform will reach out and help dads get in the lives of their children because we don't have platforms doing that. So we want to make sure to leverage this platform to help out the dads of America. Hope you enjoyed the interview. We're here today on One Million Fathers Interviews with Lester Thomas. Now, Lester is a person that's on the page, and we put out the call to see if anyone wants to do interviews. You're looking for two people. Um, Lester connected with us pretty quick, and uh, we're here today. So, Lester, how you doing? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. So, Lester, can you tell us a little bit about your story? Sure. I uh, have two little girls, and it, it pretty much started out like any other uh, relationship would. It started out great, and everything was going well. And um, from there, after having uh, two children, it started to go down the hill, and that's when the game started. Okay. What is the age of the children right now? Uh, four and five. Oh, good ages. Um, were you married to her? No, we were never married, which is quite common um, among most uh, couples. A lot of couples aren't married um, as opposed to, you know, being married. So that's one issue. Okay, because the reason why I asked that because, you know, people like ask that. Were you married? Were you, you know, you just had a girlfriend? So, okay, we got that out of the way. Um, now, you said you had the children and things start going downhill. Why did it start going downhill? Um, to be honest, uh, there were other men involved, uh, and I had a problem with that. Um, afterwards, when I, when I had something to say about it to my kid's mother, uh, she didn't like it, and that's when the problem started with the going to court, the child support issues, the custody issues. That's when it fell apart. Okay, so you said other men was involved while you was with her, or are you talking about after the fact? Uh, no, this is while we were together. Um, I had issues with her uh, dealing with other men, and um, also really the upkeep of the children. Okay, so... I, I had a problem with Okay, so you said that she was dealing with other men. In what yeah. capacity was she dealing with these men? Was she uh, just talking to men? Was she too flirty with other men? Was she uh, actually having relationships with them? What I mean, what's the what's what's going on with that? Yeah, that's I, that's a pretty loaded question, um, and I only have a uh, broad answer for that because it, a lot of times, you know, uh, what you don't know uh, will hurt you. And I know that there were other men involved. To what extent, I'm not sure. I know these were um, outside relationships from our existing relationship during the time that we were together and we had children. Because once we got off into court, the gentleman that she was talking to at the same time we were together, she actually moved with the children um, to another state with him. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah. So basically, you're putting two or two together, you're fooling other people. So you're fooling other people, you brought it to her attention, um, and you say she didn't upkeep the kids. What was she not doing with the children that you felt that, you know what, this is something you need to be doing as a mother? Well, uh, I, our, our, both our children were born premature, and we were located in Alabama. We were located in Alabama at the time. Um, they were back and forth to the hospital because of asthma, and I had a very hard time with her giving them the medicine when they should have it. Um, I had a very hard time with her just watching the kids in general. No, those were big issues for me. Okay, so... Not giving them proper medication, that what you were saying? And yes, that's correct. 
medication and in general. So did she show any signs of, of not being a person who would take care of things that they, she should? I mean, like within her personal life, I mean, how was her, you know, like work history? I mean, how was her credit? Well, I mean, you know, things that was, she would have to upkeep herself. How was that? Yeah, it was, it was fine. And I think that to a certain extent, when we first started, when we first started being in a relationship, you know, you're blinded to a certain extent and you're focused on that person. And these are things that uh, slowly matriculate out over time. You don't really notice them uh, right away. Um, some of the issues that I had with her were not things that would have put up a red flag um, when we first started going together. Um, but after after the relationship pretty much fell apart and we started having those issues, it all came just falling down at one time pretty fast. Okay, so when she gets to court, okay, and uh, she has this guy there within the court, what does she tell the court about you and how, and how much is she really trying to get you know from you in child support? At first. Well, I, you know, there there comes a, a there's a, a level of <clears throat> I think you know spite that comes with this when you go to court, and uh, I had problems with acquiring adequate visitation with my children. That was the most important thing to me um, at that time was the visitation. Right. And it started out with her trying to restrict my visitation. She wanted me to have less. Um, involvement with them as possible, I assume, to get back with me or for whatever reason. I'm not sure. Child support came a little bit later um, within the, you know, within the child custody period um, where I am. And to be honest with you, I, I think that a lot of men, especially me, I got hit with retroactive child support. People know that it's back child support um, when I had been supporting my children all the time. In fact, she was staying with me before the children were born. After the children were born, they were staying with me. I, I was providing for them. She didn't have a job and I still got hit with back child support. Correct. And that, and that is something I tell most men. If you're not with this woman anymore, get you an attorney and you two deal with them or go to the judge and you guys set up the child support, it would be a lot better if you set up the child support than she go over there and set him up. Because at least when if you're not with her anymore, she can't go up there and say, oh, he never paid nothing. Say, wait a minute, I live with her X amount of time. This is my proof. Because as men, sure. we cannot go in family law courts blinded by ourselves. We can't no. do that. We need a good men's rights attorney to be with us every step of the way. So now they in Alabama, what's the law? Four years, five years? How many years they went back on you? Um, actually, during the time they went back since the children were born. Oh, wow. Yes, they went back from the date of birth. Um, and I, I, I definitely think you're right about that. When you're Before these incidents happen, men need to make sure that they are proactive in, number one, acquiring the proper visitation with their children so there's not a big gap in between because that's hard on children no matter what age um, they are. You know, fathers need to be present to make sure, you know, they're witnessing what's going on with their children. And number two, uh, child support issues. You know, a lot of men, they they talk a lot with the child's mother and they give them money, preferably cash. And when you get to court, none of that matters. Correct. None That's right. You didn't give nothing because they're not going to say you gave anything. As men, we always have to protect ourselves. Never believe. Let me tell you something. I don't care what that woman told you during that relationship. This is just something I'm telling all men. When you're not with her no more, the gloves are off because That's most right. women are emotional. They react on emotion. They do things on emotion. And sure. they use tired times the children as an agent of revenge against you. So they know she can't hurt you no other way but through the kids. So that's what they do. And see, when I say you go to an attorney, the attorney going to set up visitation already. They're not going to set up sure. that you go without your child. And having an attorney, look, they will say, if she prevents you, we're going to get her on contempt. And I don't think she want to get brought in on contempt sure. for preventing you from seeing your child. Because most states, it don't matter how much you owe in child support, okay? If you have a visitation order, you're supposed to see your child, period. That's right. That's right. And a lot of that is 
it's about men being knowledgeable and educated about the issues that they are facing. And it, it to me, uh, a lot of men that go through these things and they're not proactive enough, it's almost as if uh, it's a double-edged sword. And no matter what they do, you know, they're still going to be at the bottom of the barrel. Uh, I definitely think that you're – correct in your observation about men acquiring uh, attorneys from the onset of these issues before they happen. Right. And that's also very important as well, because a lot of times in certain, and it's different in, 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 in certain jurisdictions where women are provided with attorneys, or I'll tell you this, they're provided with what you know as guardian ad litems. Okay. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, they act as attorney for uh, these women and women are not supposed to uh, be appointed attorneys in child custody cases in most jurisdictions, but they are. And it's detrimental to you. And they're not paying for attorneys. They're coming to court, they're showing up, and these people are representing them free of charge. Well, I know at least, you know, I, I went through a custody case myself, fought for months about custody to get more time. I want initial custody. I didn't get it. I got uh, an extended visitation. So it's like 50-50 time, literally, So which is great for me. I see my son every week. Um, but the attorney general only want to hear child support. Once you start fighting about custody and special rules, like, oh, no, no, you got to go to judge. You know, so yeah. that's when attorneys get involved. And I'll tell you, brother, it is expensive. Oh, it's yeah. It's expensive. I mean, yeah. you know, and my lawyer is a good lawyer. She don't charge a lot, but it's still expensive. And, and sure. you know, and, and she had a lawyer that was a real, you know, dickhead. Okay, yeah. uh, charging her more than what he should have charged. Her. And my lawyer busted him out in court on that. How he yeah. overcharged her, and I would laugh and I said, "Look at this dude here. She, he, she's busting him out. He got so mad while well, she was sure. grilling him about how he was overcharging. They were trying to stick me on attorney fees. You know, he yeah. want to say." He charged her twelve thousand dollars, so you want to stick me with twelve thousand dollars attorney fees? So the judge is like, you know, how much you paid your lawyer? You know, so she told him, you know, about close to six thousand dollars. He's like, well, you know, he still awarded her attorney fees. I'm like, why? Why would you do that? I it, it, I got more out of the deal than she did, but yet I had to pay her attorney fees just sure. because not with my situation, just because me and my wife work hard like good Americans supposed to do. Sure. Came up from, you know, where we was at, not having a whole lot. And that's another thing. Men that work hard do for themselves, okay, we got to suffer for it. And why well, yeah. is it that these females get to get a piece of what we uh, work hard for? You get what I'm saying? That's the part that, sure. that most men don't like. And that's why I'm glad they go into this new uh, debit card system uh, with sure. child support. Like, they can't get gas with it. They can't pay a cell phone bill with it. They, uh, um... What else? I think my wife was telling me about that uh, particular card that we were researching. Uh, you can't do a whole lot with it other than gas, uh, not gas, I'm sorry, food, you know, certain extracurricular activities. are real restrictive, but they have an ATM option on it. So my thing is, by that card, at least here in Texas, we need to galvanize and say, shut down the ATM option. That way you can track where the money is spent. A lot of men say, look, if I give you $1,000 money in child support, I want to see where you're spending that on the child. Of course. Of course. Because prior they came out this car, you just take the old car to the liquor store and buy, buy stuff or the club. Sure, sure. And, and, and you're right about that. I think that – and this is the thing. I, a lot of times men do not have a problem paying child support because it's going to their, their children. And believe it or not, that's what they want. You know, um, I, I think that a lot of times the accountability of the money – is an issue, and you have to look at this and look at it with the fine through with the fine tooth comb. Because if you if you go to court and you, you fill out these uh, these child support worksheet forms, and you know they're gonna they want you to provide everything that you own, bank accounts, uh, yep. jobs, all of that. Stop. A lot of it is everything. geared towards the men. Okay, they will only they'll take the same information for the female, but you better believe that they're looking at your assets and what you can contribute because they're about to give you visitation. You're not going to get chances of you getting full custody is slim and none. And a lot of men just, you know, you have to accept that part. But overall, in general, this is a I'll say it like this. This is a game. Okay, that's a money racket, brother. 
It's a money yeah. racket. If they can screw you and get your money, they, they always say the best interest of the child. The best no. interest of the child is having a equal parenting uh, partnership between the two and they be in the life. That's more important to the child. A father that's going to be there for school recitals, uh, tutoring, put them in tutoring, uh, showing up for games, be in the child's life. Not sure. a dollar. A child don't, don't know about no dollar spent. They don't know, but they know right. if they're at their recital or their their uh, track meet or whatever the, you know your your daughters are in. That's what they remember. Sure, sure. And, and and if you look at it, if you look at the amount of child support that they award to some women, you know, if you take for instance, for example, a uh, two year old. Now, I, I understand that pampers are high, and you know, babies require certain necessities, but. If you look at it, how much does it really take? How much does it really take to maintain a healthy, stable environment for a two-year-old? Because if I'm making five thousand dollars a month, they're going to hit me hard, and you know, and it, it's really designed to support these women. Because at the end of the day, uh, as far numbers as numbers go, men are more capable of making more money than women. So that's who they go after. They go after the men because men can bring more money into the system. A lot of these judges, right off the bat, they will hit you with that child support because the department here is called DHR, um, but the people that you pay child support to, if you notice, if you don't pay that money every month or if you're in arrears, it goes up because they have interest on that. Mm -hmm. And the interest goes to the general fund for the state. Yeah. Well, the judge that you're working for, well, the judge that you're in front of, well, he's working for the state and he has a pension and his pension is funded by the general fund. You know, I mean, you have to think about all of this has something to do with it. And for fathers that go to jail, and that's another thing. They will hold you in contempt and they will make you pay child support. But this is this man. Listen, this thing goes so deep. I, I mean, you know, the federal government uh, actually uh, pays the and, and if you look at it, every for uh, for child support, if you're behind a certain amount, they'll come, they'll pull your passport. All kinds of stuff. Yep. Well, this is mandated by the federal government, and basically the state follows suit because they get money. The state gets money for collecting child support. Yes, they do. They get, they it's, 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 it's all a money racket, like like we we're saying. And it's the and one thing I can tell people about family uh, law courts: they have no issue about race. All they care about is money. Now, criminal justice system, that's a that's that's the race thing. We we that's proven. But not family law. You got every race of man saying the exact same story, horror yeah. stories, you know, and, and that's just crazy to me, you know, how these people can get away with this stuff and how it benefits, you know, the women. And if and you know, if you say something about it, something's so wrong. And my thing is like I told a lot of people. We speaking up for the dads that want to be there, the dads that's working hard, the dads that want to be in their child's life. Then when I do these news stories, uh, Lester, and you got these kids acting like some thugs, okay, yeah. you acting like, got them acting like hood rats, then you want to say, where the parents at? What happened? Well, some of these kids, some of them, they the old hood rat mother say you can't be around the uh, your, your your child. Uh, you know you gotta come through me. You gotta ask me. You gotta beg me. You gotta give me money because some of them pull that too. You, as long as you giving them extra money, then it's like okay, you can see your child a little bit more. Right. Or some of them, if, as long as you having sex with them, then you sure. can see your child. But if you got a, a wife or a girlfriend, you don't want to have sex with them no more. Then they say, oh, you're not gonna see your child. I want. I don't want my child around that hoe. That kind of stuff. <laughs> you know how that's how some of them act. Yeah, sadly so. Um, but but I I do want to say this, and for people, and and I, I don't, you know, I have been rude by the system with my kids. It's horrible. It is horrible. But I will say this: the system does work. It works. The American uh, court system is work. It's designed to work, and it works if you know how to use it. Uh, I'll tell. And this may be a, a, a bit left field, but 
a lot of times, like you'll when you go to court, uh, they have this book, and you know the the saying: if you want to hide something from people, you hide it in a book. And um, a lot of people don't know because they don't teach this in school. There's a book called The Rules of Civil Procedure. Okay, and each state has a book. Uh, it's called the rules of procedure. Well, a lot of these books are about this thick. I mean, some of them are like a thousand pages or so. But the actual pages that you need to read in order to completely control the court, it's only about 14 or 15 pages in that entire book. Uh, it's utilized. It, it basically says... Um, how a person is supposed to uh, follow procedure in court. It says what the judge can do, what the judge cannot do. Um, it says what the other opposing party, your uh, your baby mama, it says what she can do and what she cannot do. And these attorneys, they know this like the back of their hand. Um, I don't think it's it's honestly an eighth grader uh, can, can learn the rules of civil procedure. Um, I... Personally, I had been through maybe four or five attorneys. Um, I couldn't pay them. I mean, after about forty, fifty thousand dollars in debt and attorney's fees, I couldn't pay anymore. And I had wow. no other choice but to pick up a book and learn some of this stuff myself. And a lot of people they say, Oh, well, you know, that's too much, but it's actually a dead end street because if you don't have an attorney, you're screwed, and your life will become miserable. And it already is, I'm sure, but it, it, it just, you know, these are little small things that um, men need to learn. They need to know this um, because if you don't have an attorney, if, if the mother's, if your, your child's mother doesn't show up when she's supposed to with the children, you file a motion for contempt. Most attorneys are going to charge you twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 out of the box before you even get going good to file this motion. Well, if you're paying back child support or if you're paying child support, period, how can you possibly afford to pay them $1,500 up front? So these are things that men need to learn how to do themselves and eventually it will it will better the situation, you know, because they have to call these women. You have to stay on, you know, the um, the offense in these in these issues. You do not want to be on the other side of that courtroom when you're the defendant and you're there trying to defend yourself. Worst place you can possibly be because chances are they're going to get you. Mm hmm. So uh, you was telling me that you are a law student, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, what uh, law are you trying to go into? Uh, family law. Good. I'm yeah. happy to hear that. So your experiences have motivated you to go to family law? Uh, I, I have no other choice uh, but to become an attorney. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm fighting for my children. Um, I will not let them go. It is something that uh, as a father, I just cannot do. And I promised them that I would fight for them. And this is the only way that I can do this properly. Um, I cannot afford any more attorneys. And like I said, it, it may seem like a lot, but this is stuff that an eighth grader can, um, can do. It's really not that hard, to be honest. Okay, so how close are you to becoming an attorney? Uh, this is my second year. This is my okay. second year. I'm in a four-year okay. program. Um, and so I have two more years to go, and um, I'll be on my way. Okay, so after the, did you have to go to law school after that, or how does that work? Uh, I'm in law school now. You're in law school now. Okay, all right, man, that's that's awesome, man. Um, you know, just you actually going to help fight the system, and you know they have you know men's rights attorneys and out there, and you know you'll know how to do it. You'll become a father's rights attorney, and we need more and more out there like you. Sure. Yeah, sure. because, you know, we do need somebody that's going to help fight back. Cause this system is trying to just bleed our pockets. They don't care about their children. They don't care about us. They don't care about visitation. All they want, like you say, is to collect that interest, and right. they want to collect that money from the actual case from the mother once a year. Because even the state of Texas, they collect $25 per case once a uh, year. Wow. You know, I mean, and I know every state do that, like a servicing fee. Sure, sure. If a service in that case. So, sure. you know. I tell most men, you know, even though, like I said, I was married and it still happened, you know, if you can, you know, try to pick the right person, 
and make sure you guys are married before you have kids. Sometimes it works out a little bit better. You know, uh, I just you know I just, I just advocate that for a lot of people. Cause I tell people if you think about it, at the end of the day, like yeah, man, I shouldn't have had no kids with her because I wouldn't have married her no way. You know, and and that's why I tell yeah. people if she ain't worth your last name, then she shouldn't be worth having your children. Sure. Uh, um, you know, we we can possibly eliminate this stuff because these people in this courtroom they want to rape us of our money. They don't care about our time with our children, and now we're here discussing this. What we're discussing today. Um, so how is your visitation now with your children? My visitation is not going so well. Um, actually, this is something that we will run into uh, as well. Um, the mother of my children, she actually relocated to another state. Uh, normally, when one person is in the state that the child is born in and the mother leaves, it stays in that state. Mm-hmm. Okay. But um, because, you know, that state has jurisdiction. Uh, In my case, the court that I was in was the worst place that you could possibly be in for a child custody case or any case um, for that matter. There were some things going on um, within this within my case that shouldn't have been going on. I can't speculate on that right now, but Mm -hmm. um, it was more beneficial for me to move to another state to try to get it outside of the jurisdiction of the state that I was in where I was getting horribly unfair treatment. Um, I've done that. I've been able to register that order um, in the state that my children's mother is in. And I've, you know, I've moved forward. As a matter of fact, I'm about a month and a half ago, I filed a motion for contempt and I have a um, hearing on that on the 19th. So about a week and a half away um, on that. And I am going to nail her. All right. So let me ask you a question. If the judge say, you know what, ma'am, you're held in contempt. I'm going to lock you up for whatever days you want to lock you up. You going to let it happen? I will be there to pick up my kids. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Because I tell men that when you file that contempt on them, because you know what? When they want that back pay a child support, they don't say, no, don't put them in jail. Oh, yeah. No, no. no they, let, they let a man go to jail. So <laughs> put up behind in jail, too. Shoot. Sure. And let me, let, me, let me say this real quick because I, I, I really want to – now, this is not legal advice. I'm not your attorney. I can't give you legal advice. But I will tell you this, and it's for educational purposes only. In most situations, in almost every situation, when a man is being held in contempt for non-payment of child support – okay, I don't know why most attorneys don't do this, but – if let's just say um, you're behind on child support, you can't pay. Now you should get what they call a modification and try to get your child support lowered. Um, but in the event that you're not able to do that, because you have to hire an attorney most of the time to get the modification done, and they, you know, file for contempt, your mother, um, the kid's mother, file for contempt, and they get you there, and the judge says, "Okay, listen, you're gonna need to pay a thousand dollars a day, or you're going to jail until you get a thousand dollars." They have to show that you have the ability to pay that one thousand dollars that he's asking you to pay. Because if he doesn't, if if you don't have a thousand dollars to pay, you can't go to jail. They can't send you to jail for that. There's two types of contempt. There's criminal contempt and there's civil contempt. Criminal contempt is designed to punish someone. Civil contempt is that's why they it's called a purge and everyone's seen the purge um, on TV it's something similar to that um, but they give you what they call a purge amount the thousand dollars that I just gave as an example and um, the Supreme Court in several states uh, have said that you cannot use civil contempt to punish someone they say that you have the keys to your own cell okay so if you don't have whatever they're asking you for they have to prove that you do. So they have to say, the other party has to say, okay, well, yes, he does, Your Honor. He has $1,000 in his account right now, and he can pay it. They can't lock you up because if they did that, then they would be punishing you, and they can't do that because it's civil contempt. So men need to be very, very careful about that when they go and the judge is asking for money, and if they honestly don't have it, 
they need to say something. They need to put it on the record and say, listen, the amount of money that you are asking me for, I do not have it. And the other party has not proved that I have the ability to pay this. And they can't lock you up. If they do lock you up, you may want to hire somebody to file maybe a writ of habeas corpus. Um, and they normally can get you out on a writ of habeas corpus if the judge is just going to lock you up. So that's something that men need to take a look off into and research a little bit more. Well, that's good. You're definitely giving us some educational um, advice that we all need to hear. You know, men who's listening to this uh, right now, please heed his words. He is a law student. Um, he's fighting for his kids. And, you know, I definitely commend you for, you know, everything you're doing for your kids. At the end of the day, it's about our children. It's not about these women. It's our children making sure that we have a lasting effect in their life. We don't want to see our kids acting a fool on TV or, you know, being the next Amber Rose, all them other ones. You know, have a, you got to have a fall in your life to keep you on the straight and narrow. Uh, so, so, brother, I thank you for joining us, you know, on the interview today, uh, sharing with us what you're going through, giving us some great uh, legal advice. And uh, just let us know how Not things legal are going. advice, educational well, material. Well, educational advice. How about <laughs> that? Okay. So, brother, thank you for joining us and um, keep in touch. All right. Likewise, man. Thank you so much.